Alright guys, touch grab it back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. Big news yesterday on the entire season structure for 2023. The kickoff event that's going to go on in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The implications in this one, which teams are going to get through to partnership, all the details. We're going to break them down today. Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Not far off 25k now. Love to see it. Firstly, this from Zekin, just kind of what well, a reminder of what happened with this Killjoy turret sitting in a rather interesting spot. And even just wanted to mention this from Ardis real quick from the FBX side, of course. They made it through to the final four in the tournament. And um, I mean, yeah, Ardis straight up calling out Riot here because he reckons that last event, Riot confirmed he had 50 plus packet loss during a round, decided not to replay it. Then I started teleporting 12 11 in the replay round. Nothing happens, but a turret shoots a wall and let's replay the rounds. It's like, um, I mean, yeah, Ardis is not happy at all. He goes on to say, really do love the consistency. Now they have both clips, but won't show them to me. So apparently Ardis is talking to Riot saying like, look, this replay thing was absolutely unacceptable. The decision was absurd. And he's like, look, give me the information here. I want to see these clips. I want to see how you guys made your decision. And they refused to do so. So, I mean, yeah, not exactly getting on the right side of Riot, but I think understandably there was a lot of frustration about the way that replay was handled from both sides of the story, really. After that result, of course, in Istanbul a couple of days ago, let's dive then into what's going to happen this season. The VCT season will begin in February. I'm pretty sure we already knew this date. It will feature though. This is really cool indeed. And this might be the only time we ever see this in the rest of Valorant history. A three week long kickoff tournament with all 30 partner teams on land in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So this is honestly pretty incredible. It's going to be a fantastic way to kick off the partnership era with all 30 teams from of course 10 from each region flying out to Brazil playing a three week long kickoff event where one team will win and the team that wins actually gets quite a lot of benefits. We'll see that here in a second. But the thing is, this might be the only time this ever happens, right? Because in future seasons, it might be there might not be a kickoff or the kickoffs might be interregional. There might be another Masters event or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, this kickoff might be a, effectively a one-off in Valorant history because I can't imagine they're going to be putting these on every single year. But uh, of course, Champions is not with all 30 teams, although Champions and Masters both will have teams from various regions. So this is the video they come out to explain exactly what's going on. This is pretty much the breakdown. This is the season structure for next year. I'm still somewhat surprised the season is so short really. It's effectively a seven month season but if I guess you consider challenges then it starts in January I suppose but for the pro side it just goes from mid-February to effectively mid-September with the end of champions. But this is what happens. So like first of all I'm a little bit surprised as well that they go from three masters events in year one to two masters events this year. The next year there's just one masters event. So it's like what's the point having champions and masters when like there's as many champions as there are masters. So a bit confusing to me but anyway this is how it goes. There's effectively one stage, then LCQ, then champions. But of course, because they've got to do this all around the world in three different partnered leagues, there is still a lot of Valorant to be played. So anyway, the kickoff tournament begins in February. That's when this happens for three weeks or so from February into March. A winner is then crowned in early March and they get some benefits. Then there's an eight week international league split, kind of like what we had this past season when all the 10 teams play each other effectively in a split. There's going to be live crowds as well for those. And then the teams that come out on top, then the winners of each of those regions get crowned and then the best teams get to go to Masters and then after, you know, the winners of Masters or the top placing teams in Masters get an automatic buy to Champions and then there's the last chance qualifiers from around the world. Alongside that, you've then got Challengers. Split 1, Split 2, that's every team that isn't in the international partnered league and the winners of those regions then go to the Ascension Tournament in July into early August where the three teams from around the world that will advance into the Partnership League and move up a notch and next season then get confirmed. So pretty cool schedule. I think it makes sense for them maybe to dull it down a little bit year one just to make sure they can execute it properly and there is of course a lot of Valorant to be played in front of crowds all around the world. So this is kind of the big story though. The start of the season in February, a three week international tourney with all 30 teams. First look of course at the new rosters, a one time event. I'm pretty sure they did actually describe it as a one time event so this will probably never happen again. Crown a winner in early March. This is also very interesting. The team who places first, the team who wins this tournament gets an extra spot for their league in the Masters event, right? So I'm not exactly sure how many teams are going to go to the Masters event, but you would think, okay, let's say there's 10 teams that go to Masters, let's say. I mean, the numbers don't maybe make too much sense, but 10 teams might make sense. You might have three teams from each region that get to go to the Masters event, and then like whichever team wins the kickoff event, then their region gets four slots instead of just three. So I think that's a kind of cool idea as well. Now, the first competitive split begins with weekly land competition in EMEA Pacific and the Americas. 
Now, the cities where it's based, I think we probably could have guessed those, but it's Los Angeles in the Americas League, it's Berlin in EMEA, and then it's Seoul in the Asia Pacific region. So this is quite a big deal because, of course, Los Angeles, we saw that recently Shroud mentioned that he would definitely consider playing in the Partnership League if and only if they play in Los Angeles where he is based. Indeed, the International League matches will occur in LA for the regular season splits. The split then begins in March, featuring eight weeks of regular season competition. In future seasons, though, it's going to be two International League splits, so I guess they're going to kind of build it up over time. And then the second International Tourney of the Year after kickoff is their Masters. That's in June. And then the best teams get to go to Champions, and we've already seen a lot of this stuff. So, of course, then also the Challenger side. And each LCQ will advance one team into Champions. So, interesting, really, that only, I guess, one, I guess it's the same as it's been before, but only one team from each region gets through from the LCQ. I suppose that kind of makes sense. So, that is what we know as it presently stands. This also, just to confirm that these international split matches will have live audiences. Good news, of course. Makes sense, but, you know, good news nonetheless in LA, Berlin, and Seoul. So, definitely, I think, some big insight here and some big kind of implications for where these teams have to be based and what they might potentially do, because all the teams from the Americas, for example, will have to be based in LA for these split matches. And it definitely ups the chances, I guess, that Shroud maybe gets another spot elsewhere, because that was pretty much his number one thing that he wanted to make sure happened in order to make sure he can actually play or wanted to compete for the upcoming season. So that's what we know for now. Now, of course, one of the big dramas about this, understandably, is the fact that all the teams are going to go to Brazil for their first event of the season. And certain players have a fair bit of beef with certain Brazilian fans from various esports across history. Brazilian fans are very passionate. Some would argue more than passionate at times. And certain players have got on the wrong side of that fan base. Now, Buzz, right after this announcement, of course, from DRX, kind of says here that he's apologizing to the, the Brazilian fan base. Now, I didn't even know this was any, I didn't even notice this being drama, but apparently some Brazilian fans were not happy with him because in a match against Loud a few days ago, they uh, they said in the post interview that, um, well, he basically said that I feel like I, my team only showed 20% of our true abilities, effectively saying, look, we didn't play at our best, which I feel like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, people implied this to mean, wow, you're really discrediting Loud, like at Loud are way better than you, and you're saying, wow, we didn't play our best, but you were just the, the worst team that Loud on the day. So, I mean, yeah, I guess people took that to be he was berating Loud, and he's saying, look, that's not what I was trying to say. I was trying to say we didn't play particularly well, and I wasn't trying to underestimate Loud or berate them or whatever. So, he's trying to apologize for, uh, you know, two Brazilian fans before he gets out there that might be mad at him, right? But I'm sure there's other players that might be going that are not going to apologize because of FNS, if you guys remember, I think it was a few years ago now in the Counter Strike side, FNS got into some drama with some of the big name, like Brazilian guys at the time. I don't know if it was like Henny or like kind of a, that, those group of players. I'm sure some of you guys remember it. Can let me know in the comment section below. But I'm pretty sure that FNS is maybe not so well liked within the Brazilian scene. And um, and of course, Zoms is kind of the, the key culprit of recent times when he says, send me in your place. So Zoms is ready to come to Brazil. And like, um, I mean, yeah, of course, we saw not long ago at all now. This was the tweet that came out at Champions last season when the whole of Brazil, like I think it was the Vivo Keyed drama was going down and Zoms was at, well, tweeting stuff like this out. Brazil need to do less typing and more playing. And then he comes back with, um, you know, basically prize money winners of all time. And it's him kind of topping the list at the time, at least. I'm pretty sure it's changed now. The Opta guys are now, I believe, on top. And we got replies like this from Brazilian players and fans and stuff saying, you know, so if they give me one minute with this child. So, you know, I mean, like, this is just type of the stuff that happens. Now, Zoms is maybe not on the best side of the Brazilian community. And then all the players. Now, look, Zoms that might not even attend because we don't know what's going on. But Sentinels in general, probably not particularly well liked down there. And uh, then all the teams, probably Sentinels included, are going to fly in. We don't know if Zoms is going to be on that roster next year. Probably not. But, um, you know, he might be on another roster next year, potentially. Who knows what's going to happen. And the Brazilian fans might not take too kindly to it. Right? I mean, look at this. 40,000 likes, 10,000 replies. Absolutely incredible stuff. So, yeah, Zoms is getting ready to pack his bags. Now, the other side of this, though, apart from the players that have beef with Brazil, are the players that are going to, well, hopefully go to Brazil, because if you go to Brazil, then that probably means you're in a partner team. So, Chet says Moptic ready to go to Brazil next year. So, this is um, interesting, right? Because Optic, we don't know 100% if they're going to get into partnership. We believe, like, my top of list is Sentinels, 100 Thieves, probably Cloud9, probably TSM, probably Optic, right? I guess those would be my kind of five that I would say are pretty certain. But we don't know for sure yet. Now, either Chet is kind of saying this because he believes he will be there, or he's saying this because even if Optic don't get in, he's expecting to get on another team regardless that does get in, which also could be a viable option here. And also Chet replies to this with the green heart, probably saying that, yeah, he's pretty confident they'll get in next season. And even Ye says the following, hopefully going to Brazil in 2023.
free. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Optic may be well received down there with the exception of FNS, but uh, look, I guess we'll see how it happens, but it's interesting they're going to host this in Brazil. I think that's all we can really say for certain as it presently stands. And just to mention this before we close out the video, because Son was going on a bit of a Twitter rampage last night talking about how he loves Haven. He, um, he really hates Breeze though and bring back splits. So look, I think Pearl honestly so far has kind of proved its worth to some degree. It might need a few tweaks to make itself a better map, but I don't mind Pearl. It's decent to watch, I think, at times. I think it maybe is getting there to play as well. Mid-map's still a bit of a mess, but I don't mind Pearl so much in fairness. I think it might be better than some of the other maps we have in the game. But Split, I still think, was a better map than Pearl, and I do think is a better map for competitive in general, maybe marginally. But I guess some wants it back. Now, if Split was to come back, let's say, next season, because that's the thing, when next season starts, there's going to be probably a new agent in the game, there's going to be maybe a new map in the game, or they could potentially change the map set around. Like, what would you like to see from the map pool changes? Would Split come back next year? Should Breeze go? Should Fracture go? Should Bind go? Like, because I think Pearl should but probably stay for a bit, maybe with a tweak or two, who knows? And in fairness, we did recently see that they're going to tweak Fracture to try and make that map better. So maybe minus Bind or minus Breeze and then bring Split in next year again, I think would be maybe a positive sign. Or maybe they're removing Split to try and work on a few things to make it play a little bit better and make it more balanced for attack and defense. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. And tells the YouTube gods, this is a good video. I'd also like you to see it as well. And I've grown the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.